Yo, what up, B? Yeah, nigga. This is Jazz Mars Podcast. We live. Yo, Mac. Whoa. Yo, we in the fucking place to be. Um, We getting rave reviews on our last podcast with Miss Owana. You know what I mean? Um. It was something like, you know, I wasn't sure how they was going to accept on the East Coast. You know what I mean? And uh, they really like it. You know, they was very receptive to it. And, you know, it was greatly appreciated. Uh, yo, when I started this podcast shit, I ain't know what to think. You know what I mean? Um, I knew it was a new avenue I could try. And, uh, you know, sink my teeth in. But I ain't know what, 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 what niggas was going to think. You know what I mean? I ain't know if people was going to think, uh, yo, he ain't seasoned enough. And, you know, early on, they was like, oh, this ain't F and K, this ain't Trunks. And even Trunks himself, you know, kind of, you know, side dissed me. But, uh, you know, we worked it out. You know what I'm saying? And we a lot more, you know, we a lot more clear on what's, what, what, what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Uh. But with that out the way, you know, I just want to say that. Thank you, you know. Um, on to the news before we get to, you know, our guest this afternoon. Uh, looks like the damn Halloween shit is going to be delayed. You know what I mean? We're having serious computer issues at the moment. So, uh. We can't really work on what we want to work on. The shit keeps cutting off out of nowhere. Uh, we experienced the same kind of shit in 2014. You know what I mean? I think 2014. You know, and uh, the shit just did it out of nowhere. We took it to a repair place and they fixed us up. You know what I mean? But the shit happening again. You know what I'm saying? And um. It's just, uh, it's just really fucking us up, you know what I'm saying? It's like, the shit's out of nowhere, you know, uh, it's pissing me the fuck off, like, you know, um, I just don't get it, you know, it just seemed like every time we working on, like, some real off-the-chain shit that's just, like, you know, out of this world, it's like, every time, it's like, the shit like this happen, you know what I mean, like, we working on something crazy as fuck, and it's like, it's so crazy, it's it's dope as hell, you know, and it's like, every time we finally got something, it's like, the computer do this shit, you know what I mean, I don't don't understand, you know, the computer hating, but anyway, that's the biggest news, uh, tonight, to this afternoon, so used to recording this shit at night. Our special guest is one of the first females in XTV. You know what I mean? Uh, she caused a whole lot of controversy throughout her existence. You know what I mean? She held down the women's championship. She was in feud after feud, and you know now she's here in the studio to tell her story for those that don't know. Gay Lean, welcome to Jazz Mars Podcast. What's going on, Jazz? I'm high as fuck. Word. So, you first got here in 95. I mean, you know, you was a part of the A-Man Nation and then eventually the Flamingo Nation. And you did your thing on the women's circuit. But what was life like before that? And then, you know, if you can uh jump into what you most known for life was crazy as hell man you know what i'm saying like <coughs> I, uh it just seemed like my mom was a bad judgment a character you know what i'm saying and, you know, she just always just chose the fuck niggas, you know what I mean? Always just chose the dudes that run on chicks. Hold on a second. Always chose the dudes that, that, that you know, run up on chicks, hit it and done, and fuck the sun. You know what I mean? That was the type of nigga she chose, you know, and uh 
she just didn't know, you know what I mean? She wasn't mentally stable enough. Uh, I ain't really sure my mom background. For a while, I resented her, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, she died eventually. I ain't even go to, I ain't even go to the bitch funeral, like, real talk, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I ain't gonna even say rest in power, just take your ass to bed, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, just, um, she just, you know, cause I was born in Baltimore, and I was in the hood of hoods in Baltimore, y'all know what it is, went from there to Compton, you know what I mean, and you already know it, Compton, yeah, you know, uh, it was wild, you know, and um, that, that's pretty much where I grew up, Compton, California, and eventually we, of course, moved down to Tampa, you know what I'm saying, we moved to West Tampa, and uh, shit, same thing, you know what it is, <laughs> you know what I mean, um, I just, like, like it wasn't necessarily abuse, it just wasn't really family, you know what I mean? I wasn't really close with nobody, Jazz. You know, I wasn't close with nobody, Jazz. I just always just kind of had it for myself, you know, and the school system wasn't really shit, you know what I mean? They trying to, like, get you out the damn school as fast as you can. They see y'all is all doomed. I'm teaching in the middle of the ghetto, you know, that's how the teachers looked at us, uh, I went to this school called Meacham, you know what I mean, and shit, it just seemed like the, the it was a white teacher, you know what I mean, and he'd just come there, he'd be like, yeah, uh, two plus two, motherfucker, one plus one, ah, uh, shit, I'm out of here, you know what I mean, he just come in there like, bitch, I don't, I don't know what y'all kids on, but y'all look crazy, you know what I mean, but from, from an early age, man, I just realized I had to fight for myself, you know what I'm saying, so did you get into like any like drugs or anything? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna ask that. I mean, because what we know you were as is, is being very promiscuous, you know what I mean? And that's how you was, uh, I don't know, that, that seemed like your bread and butter as far as uh, your later success. Not, 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 not trying to dish you or call you a whore, but uh, yeah. Um, shit, part of that was me when I was young. You know what I mean? Shit, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Sell this clip. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, bitch, five minutes for five dollars. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, ten minutes for ten dollars. Whatever, you know what I mean? I, hey, I had to hustle. You know what I'm saying? People look at it as, oh, you selling your soul if you selling yourself. Nigga, you broke as... You're you going to either listen to that old ass speech or you're going to be broke as fuck, hungry as hell, knowing that you can make a way with what you got. You know what I mean? And that's just what it was. You know, shit, I ain't have nothing. But shit, I knew niggas wanted pussy and niggas was desperate and this the ghetto. So shit, fuck it. I'll fuck anything right now. Because I ain't got much, bitch. I'll fuck you. You know what I mean? And uh, That's just what it was. You know what I mean? Getting... Them hunger pains told me to sell my pussy at a young age. It was like, yuck, man. Shit, bitch. I'm tired of living off of damn cockroach salad. Sell me. I'm like, you want me to sell you pussy? Sell me. And well, at the age of 14, it was this girl named uh, Miss Cherry. You know what I mean? And I was just, I used to watch her shit. She used to be doing that shit. You know what I mean? And I just watched how she did it. You know, but but people think that prostitution. Hold up a second. Let me hit this shit. People think that. People think that prostitution. <laughs> they think that shit, you know what I'm saying? That shit is like easy. You know I mean? Like, oh shit, girls got it easy. Just going out there and prostitute. Niggas, it's. it's a gang of girls, you know what I mean? They like, bitch, you 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 sad tripping, bitch. You know what I'm saying? This, this way I sell pussy, nigga. You know what I'm saying? What you doing, fuck, nigga? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like that. You know, it's very they very territorial, very territorial. And even though I grew up with Miss Cherry and everything, she used to give me snow cones and shit. You know what I mean? On Fridays, and we was cool. She raised me pretty much. She was like a 
she was like a real mother. Shit, when I uh, got to 12 years old selling my shit, you know what I'm saying? She like, all right, now look, bitch, I know I raised you and everything, but she ain't going to be on my block selling that shit and not giving me no motherfucking cut. All right? Garden block pussy, ho. Get the fuck out of here and know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. So it was tough. You know what I mean? And, you know, I think that's what grew the uh, tough, tougher side of me, you know, over the years. Jazz, uh, just, you know, I had to fight. You know what I mean? And I had to fight Miss Chair. And, uh, Shit, it was bad, man. Um, I stabbed her, you know, and I had to go to jail for two years. I, I'm a juvenile, but, uh, but yeah, I stabbed her ass, and you know, she shit, she died. You know what I'm saying? Stab, I stabbed her dead in the heart. But uh, it was on my behalf. I was, you know, it was I was it was in uh, self defense, and um, because uh, it was one night never forget this shit, you know, June 23rd, 1993, you know what I'm saying, and, um, shit, I'm just jamming a trial called Quest, you know what I mean, next thing you know, I'm on a corner and shit, vibing to that, you know, trying to get my shit off, you know what I mean, and then that she come, and I think Miss Cherry was on crap, man, because that bitch used to be tripping, she probably was on Sherm too. Both of them. Bitch was fucked up. So she come over there. You know what I mean? And she said, look now. I told you, lad. Don't be coming on my car. Sad tripping. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she pulled out the switchblade. I said, Sherry, you silly. Because I thought she was just bullshit. Then she sliced my damn arm. And that shit was bleeding, and I was like, fuck. And we get into this tussle, you know what I'm saying? And it's a fight for the switchblade, you know what I mean? Eventually, I get the better half of our elbow ass and the chin, and I stab the ass right in the throat, right there. I said, bitch, stop fucking playing. And, you know, it was just out of rage, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, you know? And I didn't really realize what I did. Until I seen all the blood in the aftermath and all the, even the gangbangers in the streets was like, oh shit, you know what I mean? And they was like kind of paused and everybody was just looking at me like, whoa. Because at that point, I wasn't that innocent little girl no more trying to hustle. I was a murderer, you know what I'm saying? And now the niggas on the block felt like shit. You know, I got to watch my back, you know what I mean? From this crazy ass bitch. You know what I mean? And, um, it was crazy. And, uh, yeah, the cops came. You know, they thought a dude did it. But it was me. You know what I'm saying? And, um, damn, they took me. Whoa, that's already a hard life right there. I mean, you say you was with a mom who was like, yo, 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 Gaylene, let me hit that. Oh, shit. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. You say you was with a motherfucking, a motherfucking, hold on. You was with a, yo, 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 oh shit, that sound like a song. You was with a, you was with a, yo, 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 you was with a, oh, anyway, yo. So, you was with a mom that was, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, she ain't really care like that. And then your pop dukes was like all different niggas. Exactly. I don't, I don't even know who my pop is to this day, Jazz. I don't even know who that nigga is to this day. You know what I'm saying? Because, shit, so many niggas ran in and out. I don't know. You know what I mean? Shit, you choose one, nigga. Could be Pete from next door. So, uh, that's a tough life. I mean, you get locked up, uh. Did you really have anybody, I mean, coming up that you can look back on? Man, Jazz, I look at it like this. I grew up, and the first person I'm supposed to trust showed me so many reasons not to trust anybody. You know what I'm saying? So, if it was people coming into my life, I couldn't, like, you know 
socialize with them or whatever the fuck because I didn't trust them. You know what I mean? Like, my mom, you know, she was who she was. And, you know, then Miss Cherry, somebody I did consider, you know what I'm saying, family, is like, I killed her. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, trust and love, I didn't trust nobody and I didn't love nobody. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I mean, that's just what it was. And, you know, being in that tough environment though it taught me you know what i'm saying shit life is real you know what i mean and i got out eventually um and that's probably when i met big 10 money a word word the legend yeah big 10 ass big 10 was just i don't know man you know what i mean he was a gangster though Cause at this time like Shit During that time out in the streets And all in, in, in these different hoods Man I was a gangster You know what I mean Jazz. I was a gangster So I got out You know and shit I found a gangster dude that, that was into Some of the same shit that I was into Had some of the same, similar experiences But you know, it wasn't a very healthy relationship looking back. And I'm pretty sure he'll tell you that. You know what I mean? Um, shit, I was a fucking prostitute. You know, like I wanted mines and that's just it. I liked him. He was cool. But overall, man, like, you know, I wasn't well-rounded. You know what I'm saying? And um, shit, he's seen that. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't like it, but he, he just... I don't know. I think he probably felt he could help me or something. But but truth be told, like, that wasn't a very healthy relationship. You know what I'm saying? Because mentally I wasn't healthy. Like, I started to do a bunch of different drugs. Like, like you see me now, shit, I'm just smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? But shit, back then, at that time, it would be like weed, crack. Uh, Coke, rum, you know what I'm saying And I'm talking about cocaine and Coca-Cola And rum that is And Just a gang of fucking drugs You know what I'm saying, all in the same Time, and it's like, damn, how you still living You know what I mean And um That's just what it was with me, Jazz You know So Going to, you know You, you, you coming into S-I-D-E Uh was you still in the streets? I mean, how did this happen? Well, um, Billy Rojo, who everybody talk about, they need to put his old ass on the podcast for a die. But Billy Rojo, uh, he used to find talent back in the day. And, you know, S-I-D-E was something that they just uh, kind of came with. And he was trying to choose a whole bunch of different people. And, you know, he just seen me out in the street, I guess. And, you know, he thought I was a tough female. And I was formidable enough to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, first, though. But before that, I was in, um, I guess, AVW or Joab version of SIDE. You know, with Big Ten. I think I was just, you know, his manager or something. You know what I'm saying? And, uh. That was cool because, like, it got me to not be in them streets, you know what I'm saying? But just because I'm not in them streets don't mean I'm not street, you know what I mean? Because I was still street, jazz. I was still street. Like, I was territory as fuck. I mean, if, if you spend most of your life in the streets and then you take into this place where you're supposed to be classy, you ain't going to be classy, you know what I mean? And, um, shit, I wasn't. You know, I ain't give a fuck. But that's what people gravitated to be towards because they was like, this bitch don't care about nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I kept myself clean and everything for a while. But after a while, you know what I'm saying? Shit, mentally, my health started to de deteriorate. You know, uh, I look at it like this the streets give you mental conditions. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious, man. Like, when you look at all the people that really grew up in the hood of hoods, you know what I'm saying? As far as celebrities, they got, like, something wrong with them. 
You know what I'm saying? Bobby Brown, bipolar. You know what I'm saying? Whitney Houston, all kind of shit was wrong with her. You know what I'm saying? Even though, like, some people say, oh, she was on drugs. Like, yeah, but if you really look into it, she was, you know what I'm saying? She had issues, you know what I mean? God bless her. But uh, that's just what it is, man. You know, when you grow up into a real hostile environment, something so crazy, you know, that has an effect on you mentally and physically at times. And um, that's just what it was. You know, I grew up in all these different hoods, seeing all this violence at an age I wasn't supposed to see it at. And, you know, I wasn't able to process it right. So as a result, I'm fucked up. Fucked up. So, uh, that's just what it is, Jazz. And, um, uh, that's why when I first, you know, came into SIDE, like I said, I was a manager. And then, you know, eventually they started to get me in the ring. You know what I mean? And shit, they loved me in the ring. You know what I mean? I just be like fighting, you know. Like, SIDE was just some shit they just kind of brought up. It's like, oh, just put all these motherfuckers together. You know, it wasn't no background checks. They didn't know I went to prison for killing this lady. You know what I'm saying? They just put us in this thing. You know what I'm saying? We had to perform for the fans. And uh, shit, it, it got real big. You know what I'm saying? Um, Flamingo and all them. Word, that's, that, 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 that's 90%. Yo, how was it working with him at that time? I mean, was it different? We was all from different areas of the hood. So I guess that's why they stuck us together. Let me just say this, though. If Billy Rojo was white, he'll be considered racist for this shit. Because he just got all the most ghetto motherfuckers and put them together. And all the crazy... No, no racism, but all the crazy, like, you know what I'm saying, rock star, like, the type of white people that's like, you know, yeah, the stadium Argo, them motherfuckers, she, he put them all together, you know what I'm saying, that, that's kind of racist on his behalf, but anyway, so yeah, he, he put us all together, and you know, at first, it was just quiet, you know what I mean, when he, when he put, like, me, Flamingo, GAP, and them, all us together, and then I think GAP just said, y'all niggas wanna, uh, roll the dice, you know what I'm saying? And then I think probably Flamingo was like, all right, man, whatever. You know? And then Flamingo had uh, beat him. And then they played some card game. And then Flamingo beat him in that. He was like, what y'all know about flushing it down a turlet? And then after that, everybody bust out laughing. It's like, what the fuck? You know, like, well, how the fuck? Turlet? What the hell is a turlet? You know what I mean? And, um, from there, man, we just, shit, we, we kicked it and we was cool. You know, um, I think the only white dude that was in the Flamingo Nation was this guy named Typewriter. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as a clique at first, it was like, I don't know, a hood love. You know what I'm saying? And we just all got each other. You know, it was just a game, like, for real. You know, what you seen on TV was real. Uh, sometimes it was a bit more turned up for the fans. But overall, you know, nah, we was against the ad. We was against the clip. You know what I mean? And um, that shit was crazy for some time. So you mentioned drugs and shit like that. Um, where do you think that started to uh, take place? Um, probably in the streets. Shit, me and Miss Cherry used to smoke weed. You know what I mean? And, um, the other drugs happened during the time I was doing the prostitute shit. You know what I mean? And it just kept you level-headed. You know what I mean? It just kept you okay. You know, shit. Sometimes you won't get the best-looking motherfucker or the best smelling ass motherfucker you know what I mean this dude smell like just stink shit and you like let me smoke everything to numb myself from this nasty experience I'm about to experience so I can forget this moment you know what I mean or OD before I fucking gotta experience this moment cause I don't wanna deal with this shit oh damn so, so you OD before oh shit many times many times I'm a drug legend you know what I mean? I done OD so much jazz like uh 
on crack. You know what I mean? Have the seeds just sitting there. Ooh, ooh. You know what I mean? Shivering and all that shit. Like, you need to go to rehab. Always a damn white dude kneeling down very slowly, talking to me in a calm voice, thinking he gonna get me to go to rehab. You know what I mean? If he ain't had his fucked up life for all these years, he ain't gonna go to rehab for all this time. So, hell nah, fuck you. You know, and, um, that was like, that was, that was a whole lot. You know what I mean? General Hospital should be familiar with me. You know what I mean? But, um, General Hospital. I mean that one hospital that started with a G. Tampa General. Sorry, Jazz. I ain't mean to yell at you. But, um, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Jazz, you hogging up the weed. Shut your non talking on podcast ass up. You can't have this weed. It's my weed. Let him have it. Fuck him, nigga. And just cause of that nigga, I'ma ask her a question. What you think of that? Fuck you, Mac Anthony. Yeah, so... I mean, did, did, did you say the drugs... Like, 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 would you say that the drugs turned up more so when you were uh, in prison and shit? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, cause... I mean... In my head, like, when I was getting arrested for doing that shit... In my head, I was telling myself, damn, you know, at least I'm not going to be in this, in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Because it got real bad. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was, like, the first, like, one of the first major things. Because Miss Cherry, like, killings happen all the time in our neighborhood. But the thing is, it's like, in my neighborhood, the shit happened. But it was more so, like, motherfuckers outside is coming in our hood like if you ain't from here you dead immediately stepping on our soil you know what I mean so it was kind of like that it was like everybody on the block love each other we cool you know what I'm saying we just don't say a lot to each other you know but then it got to a point where it's like okay this street don't like this street all right this neighbor don't like this neighbor and it got like that you know what I'm saying but that was the first time somebody in the neighborhood killed somebody in a neighborhood and everybody knew who she was in the neighborhood you know what I mean so that was something major you know what I mean and that, that shit I had heat on me you know what I'm saying for doing that so um when I went to prison I'm like okay shit at least I'm gonna have shelter at least I ain't gonna have to deal with this them same motherfuckers in the uh, prison was like they knew the story, so shit. I'm getting jumped my first day. I'm getting shanked. You know what I'm saying? The stomach and the gut. And so, yeah, shit. I did drugs. I OD'd. You know what I mean? Slit my wrist and all that shit. Because I ain't want to, like, experience that. Like, every day getting jumped. You know what I'm saying? In prison. You know, it's like, shit, you want out of that. You know what I mean? And I, shit, I really wanted out of that. You know? They put me in a psych ward and all that shit. So yeah, I know all that. I know all about being fucked up. I've been there. So moving forward, what the hell is this? Oh, sorry. So moving forward, you know. SIDE's doing his thing. Uh, what was the backstage locker room like? Um, you just knew to stay where they put you, I should say. You know what I mean? Only person that was walking around the locker room trying to get an understanding of the environment was uh John Carter, the pirate dude, whatever. John Carter, the pirate ship. Yeah, yeah. He was the only one walking around, like, trying to figure everything out. Hi, are you, Saya? You know what I mean? He was the only, like, just weird motherfucker, you know, but... Overall, you just knew to stay where they put you. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody was crazy. You know what I mean? That You get the craziest motherfuckers from the hood and the craziest people from wherever. And you put them all on this product. You know what I'm saying? To go wrestle each other. To see if it'll work. So, yeah. You know, it was a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't put on. It was real shit. But, um, that's just how it was. 
Now, 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 uh, you and Yozy, you know what I'm saying? I remember y'all used to always fight, like, all the time. Shit. I ain't like Yozy. I ain't like her. You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't know what it is. As a, Sorry. A lot of times, like, it's women, like, you know what I mean? We, it, it get like that. Caddy. You know what I'm saying? But now I respect Yozy more, but I couldn't stand her ass, man. I just felt like she was, like, talking too fast and out the side of her neck at a young age. You know what I mean? And, um, shit, I used to just slap her ass up sometimes. And, you know, she, she used to slap my ass up. You know what I mean? But, um, God bless her, though. You know what I'm saying? I... Shout out to Yozy, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm putting you over. Yeah, every time we ever talk, we was always fighting. But look, this 2016, I'm putting that shit over me, you know what I mean? That shit is dead. You was a great diva. Um, big ups to you. I'm washed up. Give me a career. So, uh, you know, you was like red hot at this point. You was the only female in SIDE and... You and Ashley get into a few. That was Josie's nigga, you know, Jazz Ma. That, 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 that was her homie, you know what I'm saying? And um, Ashley, like, she ain't like that. I was, like, disrespectful to Josie. And Ashley used to, like, shit, we used to fight backstage. So that's why when we fought on that pay-per-view, that shit was a shoot. You know, that match they had, because it was uh, during the SIDE Body Slam era, 1999. You know what I'm saying? And, um shit that that wasn't a match like we really fought you know what i'm saying and like people was like damn you know what i mean it's a crazy ass match nah nigga i'm whooping her ass and you know ashley ain't really from the street she from the suburbs you know what i'm saying but you know ashley just had so much love for yozy where she was fighting for her in that match you know what i'm saying and um i broke her nose real bad and got arrested that night uh that was that was a crazy ass time you know what I'm saying? Um, cause this was a point where my drug usage reached the all time like high. Like I was fucked up. And this is like probably the umpteenth time me and Ten broke up. You know what I'm saying? Um and and this was like the beginning of a downward spiral because uh Sometimes in SIDE, I used to just call my dad butt-ass naked. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, she butt-ass naked. What the fuck? You know, and um, that was interesting for the dudes. But sometimes it just looked crazy as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think that was my last high, though, me fighting Ashley. You know what I'm saying? Word. So... You know, I ask a lot of people this, uh, or I try to, like, ask a lot of people this. During the SIDE era, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people got different things to say as as far as what killed it. A lot of people say SIDE refused to change and, you know, adapt to new times because SIDE stayed the same. Like, from, from my understanding, uh, the, the, the dudes in the briefs, they fought first. And, you know what I'm saying, the tag team matches was always second. And the third match, I think it started to be a three-way dance just because it was match three. Get it? You know what I'm saying? And uh, <coughs> fourth match was one-on-one -on -one or whatever. But, um, like, like that's that was the format. And that's how it stayed for a long time, you know, until match three changed to three-way dance later on, of course. It used to just be one-on-one -on -one matches, you know. Um, but... Do you think that their their failure to change was what killed it? Or when HY and other things that were different, they started to get so popular, that killed it. Like, what do you think killed SIDE for you, Gayleen? Um, All of those elements, actually. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it, it can't just be one thing. Like, you got this one thing, hell yeah, you know, with, with pain and, and D-Matic that's, that's growing. You know what I'm saying? And it's different and it's reaching more fans than what we reach. You know, 
people are gravitating over that. And people are already losing interest in this product because we are failing to change, you know. And uh, I was involved in a lot of those backstage politics. Like, I remember, you know, Lex Express, uh, he used to just be, like, challenging Jack Tunney and, you know, all of them. He would be like, look, I'm tired of fighting, you know. And, and as a matter of fact, I think Lex Express actually fought in the main event on that one show where Payne was the referee. You know what I'm saying? Um because, like, he complained to Jack Tunney. He complained to all these people, like, look, man, I'm tired of fighting in the first match. Do something different. Maybe somebody will care. And, you know, that was the last time, you know, an SIDE event was that big and had that much prestige behind it because you had a pain who was at an all-time high being a referee for a match, you know what I'm saying? And it's something different, but that was good. But they still kept going to the same old shit so you know I mean I think all of those elements that people do mention I think it all killed it you know what I mean it ain't just one thing it's all those things that killed SIDE you know what I mean SIDE actually killed itself I would even say you know word so life at the SIDE for you was a bit bizarre uh, to say the least you know what I mean uh, not being disrespectful malicious or whatever Oh, nah, nah, you right. So, I say it was that way because it just seemed like, Gaylene, you shit it in the rank. <sighs> and, and you know what? That's no pun. Jazz is dead serious. I, I, I kept dude on it. What the fuck was wrong with you? Well, uh, Jazz also on drugs, you know what I mean? And um, Antonio had some weird-ass fetishes. Let's just keep that at that. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, you know, it, it reached the all-time, like, like now it's fucking with me mentally. And I wasn't really, you know what I'm saying, paying attention. I was fighting Sister Loretta. They're like, why the fuck Galen keeps shitting in the ring with Miss Sister Loretta? You know what I mean? And, uh, it was just a weird time. You know what I'm saying? And um, that, that, that that's all that was. But, but I think 2000, they were still trying to keep me out there because, you know, you still had fans. Like, it's kind of like fans for WWE. You know what I mean? It's like those fans, like, they don't want to give up on this product. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to believe it's, it's as bad as people say. So, like, they's going to stay supporting it. And I had a lot of people like, nah, man, Galen used to be better than this. And I had people supporting me, supporting me, you know. And my last time that I think I was really relevant around this time was when I had an evening gown match with Sally. You know what I'm saying? Um... At Sides of Mania, the first one. And I remember Sally was like, uh, like we was doing a bikini contest. And then she was like, yeah, you, uh, yeah, your bikini's probably all shitty. You know, all that shit in there. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> King Kong was like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's the way to... Bikini contest goes. Y'all hear yet? <laughs> that shit was funny to us. But um, that was the last time. Like, we had a lot of fun. You know what I'm saying? Um, and shit from there. I mean, 01 came in. And to me, that was the start of changes and changes for XTV. Because HY was still red hot. That was the premiere shit. SIDE was no longer. So, all of the athletes, such as myself... I wasn't being used because now it was just about the sides, like uh, Romy Rome or Abu. Like it was about him wrestling and IQ and shit. You know what I'm saying? But but as far as me, like I wasn't relevant. You know what I mean? And I wasn't really I wasn't cared about. You know what I'm saying? And um, so it moves on, and it got worse and worse, dog. 2002 kick in 
And I think I'm having matches with Princess Peach and all that, you know what I mean? And, and that's C.A.W. I'm thinking about, but shit, I just lost myself, man. I mean, like, Gaylene, I don't even know what the fuck to say, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I, I think that's just the best way to put it, like, because like, after 2000, you know what I'm saying, you was completely irrelevant. Nobody was talking about you. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? And then um, it wasn't until 2004 where you did the story of your life on CAW. And over here on XTV West, that shit was, like, incredible. Because up to that point, nobody ever did, like, a story of their life. Uh, I remember CAW was, like, you know, uh, reporting it. Like, yeah, Gaylene going to be talking about her life and everything. You know, it was, it was I think, in the middle of a pay-per-view. And you just start talking about your abuse and all the stuff going on. Uh, was that kayfabe? Some of it was. I'm going to be real. Some of it was fake. You know what I'm saying? Some of the stories I made up. But it was interesting enough that people wanted me back in the ring. And, you know, I got my audience back. But, you know, I teamed up, I got a dude, you know what I'm saying, I got pregnant by a dude named Al Mezia. and this dude was just retarded, you know what I'm saying, um, we met, this was like my, this was like me overdosing like, I don't know, the hundredth time, and uh, he, shit, he came, he seen me, he like, damn girl, you know, what? you trying to kill yourself, you stupid? And for some reason, that flattered my high ass. And you know what I'm saying? I was like, nah. Because I'd never be able to fuck you if I die. And, um, shit, he was like, shit, fuck me now. And then, you know, we, I, like, he hit me and then, um, not hit me. But we had sex. You know what I'm saying? And, um, got pregnant. And it was just a volatile relationship. Um, you know what I'm saying? He just was verbally abusive, always yelling crazy. And, you know, eventually I came back to XTV in 2004 uh, on Raw. We did Raw 2. And Almezia got into this crazy ass feud with Alec. I don't even know if XTV East Coast remember that shit. But it was this crazy feud. They had a Hell in a Cell match. Alec whooped his ass. It was like a funny-ass feud. Like, everything Almezia was saying, Alec had a funny-ass rebuttal to it. Like, I, like I, I can't remember what was said, but it was just like everything. When Almezia was trying to be this big, bad motherfucker, Alec just made him look so stupid. And it was funny, man. Um, but as far as me in the ring, like, I think that feud kind of... You know what I'm saying? Made y'all forget all about me, you know. And um, shit, I left again, you know. When I started raising my kid, and this is when I started to to, to slowly mature, you know what I'm saying? And um, <clears throat> shit was crazy, you know. But uh, I was enjoying raising my daughter, you know. And I was living life, and I was learning life, you know what I'm saying? And I, I had time to really sit back and reflect as I was raising my kid, you know what I'm saying? And really uh, try to mature and change things, you know, but life was happening way too fast, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can't say that. It was happening way too fast, and... When my daughter was like, uh, I think seven, she had said she seen me wrestling on SIDE Classics or something. And she said, ah, I want you back in the ring, mommy. I, she just said that. And I'm like, okay, I'll fight for you, baby. And uh, somehow, Almezia got sole custody of her. Because me and Almezia eventually, you know, we broke up. He got sole custody of her, and uh, my daughter want me back. I get in the ring. Uh, this was TXGTV, 
in 2005, and me and Dixie fought. And this match, everybody was looking for uh, Gaylene versus Dixie. Like, it's going to be epic. You know what I'm saying? And um, the match was horrible uh, because, shit, I wasn't performing right. You know what I mean? And I wasn't in the right mind state. And this time it wasn't drugs. I know it's hard to believe. But this time it wasn't drugs. It's just like life was like really happening. Like real shit was going on. And I'm like, damn, you know, and I wasn't mentally ready or physically ready to perform in that match. And, you know, the match was so not well received that, fuck, them old habits started to kick in afterwards. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, you hear Gaylene, I got a dodo. And that's when that era started. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I didn't know what to do with myself. And um, I was just doing whatever to get popular. You know what I'm saying? And I got erased in like 07. And shit. You know, I just, I stayed in the sober house for a while, Jazz. And now I'm good. Word. So how long you been clean, man? I've been clean for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Um, I haven't touched anything. This is this is the longest I've been clean. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I hope I'm able to remain this way. I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's because of the years of using drugs and being in the streets and I do want to give a special fuck you uh, to Big Trunks D-Matic. Um, yes, definitely. Oh, shit. Jazz Mall's podcast. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Um, XTV East don't know. So let me let y'all know. Uh, in 2011, I believe, or probably 12, Trunks decided to make a damn... You know, and it's not uploaded to XTV West Coast yet, but he made a damn DVD called the uh, Self Destruction Galen Career Suicide and all that. You know what I mean? And he just pretty much like just made my legacy just ugly. You know what I mean? It's like I'm the first diva to come in here. Nobody did what I did, thought how I thought. You know, he just like made a DVD bashing me, bashing my whole character. You know what I'm saying? And that pissed me off. Oh, shit. I keep on blocking this speaker. I hope this shit coming out right. But, yeah, man. You know, fuck you, fatty. Fat fucker. God bless you. Word. So, you clean now. You sober. Uh, You battle with MZ. Everybody's saying that you lost. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you did. Look, that was just crazy. That was just fun. You know what I'm saying? And um, that wasn't even me. That was to pass me. Oh, 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 okay. So, Gaylene, I mean, 48 minutes in. Uh, anything else you want to say? Uh, that was your story. Uh, what's in the future for you? I don't even know. You know, I know my daughter want to get in the rain. Um, but... You know, I'm just going to be supportive of that. You know what I'm saying? As far as the podcast world, look, I'm here. I'm ready to talk. I ain't making no money. So I got to do these to get money. Yeah, man. This was real, though, man. This was this was a crazy story, yo. Uh, what do you hope your story does to the young youth? Uh, I, I hope it wakes them up, though. You know what I'm saying? Just because you and the self-destructive uh environment you know what i mean doesn't mean you have to be that you you can be that change in the middle of you know chaos just smoke some weed during the stressful times and have hope that it's gonna get better and you'll see well that's been it jazz mars podcast